Om Sushumna, Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. I render my deepest gratitude, respect and love to the Paramagurus, Pooja Shri Ammagaru, my revered parents and each one of you present here for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share my experience with Sushumna Kriya Yoga. I've been practicing the Kriya since May of 2021. It's been nothing but a remarkable journey so far. And I can attest and say that it has been a rebirth. We all usually don't confront ourselves with life-changing questions or larger than life questions until we are faced with dire adversity. As I chose to break free from a tempestuous marriage, an obsessive search for answers to the suffering and pain began. I sincerely looked for an anchor that would help me guide through this ordeal. I tried every sort of technique for the most part that could give me solace, peace and happiness with him. Although I practiced many techniques and pranayama and other forms of meditation, I couldn't resonate with them for a long period of time, although they did give me peace momentarily. I came across a YouTube video of an hour long about Sushumna Kriya Yoga. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get through the entire uh, video, but the moment, uh, but I decided to play it anyways. Until that moment, I've never heard, known, or seen Atmananda Mayamagaru. Her sheer grace was divine, her voice was infectious, and her smile is so contagious that I couldn't stop myself but watch to the bottom of the hour. Everything changed for me when I also read the book, The Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahamsa Yogananda. I could resonate more with the Kriya Yoga practice that Amagaru has bestowed upon us. Once I registered with the Self-Realization Fellowship in Los Angeles, uh, and I used to get these lessons every two weeks and I understood the real essence of spirituality and how we, can, we, we ought to grow uh, in leaps and bounds in terms of your mind, body and soul. A lot of, th the moment I watched, I finished watching the video, I resolved that I will take this up as a challenge and, and sincerely practice Sushumna Kriya Yoga for 49 days, 49 minutes during the Brahma Murta hours and without any expectation. The moment I started, there was a lot of inner processing that has happened and the experiences, I cannot, I, they are not out of this world or anything, I just had to face my emotions deeper. It was very difficult. I had to face my emotions head on. Slowly and slowly, the pain, the suffering, the emotional release began to happen. And then a sense of calmness and peace within started to crop up towards the end of the 49 days. There was something about it that I did not want to give up. And that beca it became my daily routine uh, uh, during the Brahma Mahurta. I call it my rebirth because the Samya I knew before was very naive, super reactive, very impatient and confrontational, who could be easily manipulated and gaslit. Uh, with regular practice, I understood the suffering behind the, the anger and the impatience. A deep sense of compassion for my inner child grew. I owned my inner child like my own. I wouldn't abandon my child if she was going through the same suffering. I experienced a heightened sense of awareness within my meditation where I understood what death really feels like on a soul level. July 7th, 
2021 was the pivotal moment of my life as it taught me to never fear death or any circumstance or anyone for that matter. I had increased clarity that helped me make conscious and informed choices. It helped me transmute bitterness that I had with people into acceptance and forgiveness. I understood that everyone plays a role of a teacher, a guru in our lives. So I began to be extremely thankful to all the people for coming and leaving my life at the perfect time for me to grow. There just couldn't have been a better way. I now trust that what is right for my greater good comes to me at the perfect time and every experience, good, bad, ugly, worse, is an absolute blessing. I am confident that I can face any challenge with an indomitable spirit. The sheer sense of calm and happiness that arises every now and then is so addictive. There really doesn't have to be an external stimulation for that, like alcohol, drugs, smoking, etc. You can have this sense of high on demand. Every little experience has gotten more deeper, more real and meaningful. I just want each one of us to experience this feeling that is so easily accessible and know that we are divine beings having a spiritual experience. All we have to do on this journey is to unlearn what we are not. Our soul already knows our true and innate nature which is eternal bliss and happiness. As Ammagaru always quotes, Manamanta Daiva Swarupalam, Divyatma Swarupalam, Ananda Swarupalam, Dukkha Anede Ledu. So there is no suffering and suffering is merely a choice. The, the, the beautiful thing I love about this technique is that it makes you really independent and slowly detached in the sense that you will start to love each and every one more than you would have actually, uh, actually done. Something that stuck a chord in me is when Amagaru said, there is no necessity to renounce your life but to rejoice and in order to grow spiritually. And she herself is a living testimony, a wonderful daughter, wife, mother, sister, and she's played all these roles. So it's possible for each one of us. I can undoubtedly attest that practicing Sushumna has opened up limitless possibilities for me. I am astounded by my ability to respond versus react within just a matter of a year. As my uh, awareness began to increase with regular practice, introspection has naturally kicked in. When I engage in any unnecessary conversation such as gossip with anyone, a, a, an inner voice naturally keeps telling me to stop within minutes and I begin to think how could I change the conversation right now so it could be more positive and meaningful. Even in the middle of my reaction or an irritation for that matter, there is a loud inner voice telling me that I am angry in this very moment, asking me to refrain from engaging in it and just walk away and be calm. I have avoided numerous tough situations in this one year because of the introspection. My intuition has grown significantly while drawing very personal, very strong personal boundaries with dignity. The language and my choice of words have changed completely. It aches my heart to see youngsters and parents very confused and helpless while dealing with emotional issues. If you really think about it, there's no other creature on the planet that tries to self-harm or kill itself. But humans, it's only possible with humans because we are unable to accept ourselves and others fully the way we are and they are. And meditation is the only answer to grow out of that challenge slowly and beautifully. It is so important that parents begin to understand the importance of meditation as it is a life skill that no one can snatch away from oneself for lifetimes to come. You might have 
been giving them wonderful assets, but you would be proud of them when they come out of dire adversities with grace and fortitude. Everything else is temporary and we all know this. The beauty is that while doing Sushumna Kriya Yoga, you have energy and understanding to enjoy even these temporary pleasures. Our decision making skills improve significantly. Even amidst dire problems, meditation helps us remain calm, untouched and unaffected from within, helping us get to solutions quicker. Bringing in a life into this universe, blessed with all the benefits just discussed, is the world we want to get to. So as conscious parents, individuals and parents-to-be, it is possible by investing just 21 to 49 minutes a day for ourselves. How simpler can it be? The type of emotional, physical and psychological problems we are confronted with and we are facing in, is growing at an alarming rate. While this is perhaps the most comfortable and easiest generation in the terms of access to technology, knowledge, growth, money and healthcare advancement, it is sad. Every child deserves to be taught this skill for his or her emotional regulation so he or she can face any adversity with great fortitude. Increased compassion, acceptance and fearlessness. What else can a parent give to a child other than emotional freedom in any situation? You are taking care of the physical reality anyways. So why not invest in giving them the emotional freedom? There would be no obsessive need to control anyone for that matter, for your child, for your parent or your partner. Today, I sincerely pay my deepest gratitude to the Paramagurus and Amagaru who are unconditionally working for the betterment of humanity. So we can fully experience the divine beings we are while enjoying this physical reality. This technique has completely transformed my life, my parents' life, my sister's life, who I got them uh, into. So I'm very certain that it would yours as well.